morning. and resentment and fights and blaming. 
between men. Um, for more than 20 years, my mother was addicted to um, all sorts of prescription medication. It was anything from pain medication to sleeping tablets to anti-anxiety medication and um, depression tablets. So I don't have a problem with medication, but this was just not, it was, yeah, it was a crutch. It was a full-blown addiction and it just didn't help her. Um, she was, my mom was there, but, but she wasn't present. And um, it, the addiction made her mood switch from total despair to extreme anger. And um, admissions to psychiatric hospitals and emotional breakdowns was part of her life, but also of our life. And um, I, I think I remember I lived in constant fear that my mom would one day really take her own life, because she used to say that a lot. Um, if you grow up in a broken home, you have no sense of who you are. All these heavy, toxic emotions like fear and guilt and shame just gets put upon you and you just don't know what to do with it. Because um, nobody ever explains to you what they mean or what they really are. And this is not going to be how it's going to be the rest of your life. So I feel in a sense for me, I became fear, I became shame, I became guilt, and I became anger. Because I believed it, and it was my reality, it showed up in my actions, in everything I did. So what happens to all these feelings when you grow up? Do they just go away? Unfortunately, mine didn't. And um, I've just learned if you don't deal with the wounds, it will come back. And it will show up and interfere with your future. Um, it will weigh you down <coughs> and stand in the way of reaching your full potential. For the longest time, I was so blinded um, by my own hurt. I truly believed the enemy's lies that he spoke over me, or that he tried to speak over me. And um, I felt so much shame and guilt because for a very long portion of my life, I operated out of fear and not of freedom. This is a funny story <laughs> with yours. I was actually so insecure when I was younger that I had my first baby when I was 26. I think I looked 60, <laughs> So I used to be so insecure about, I can see that Tani's looking at me and saying, Sixteen or something, but um, it is just like, it's so ridiculous now. I'm like, I was blessed with looking young, and I was felt like, oh, I don't want to look so young. So I was 26, and then I was 13 with my second baby, and now I'm like almost 44, and I'm like, bring on 50. Woo! <laughs> yeah. Because with age comes wisdom. So yes. I'm like embracing my age, and I'm just, I'm just. And somebody says, you look so young, I say, thank you. Yes. <laughs> oh, <yeah>. Amen. <laughs> so a God will come and heal any insecurities you have. But, but we have to surrender it to him. Because we can keep on to him. And um, he will not just heal it, he will come and redeem it. And he will come and use it for his glory. He has made everybody for a reason. And um, the enemy has just come and he messed he just comes and mess with our identity and who we are in our core. For the longest time, I was like, God, why did you make me so sensitive? Because I feel sometimes the, the world will overwhelm you if you're too sensitive. But then you can be sensitive to the world or you can be sensitive to the spirit. Yeah. It's your choice. Yeah. Um, the Passion Translation, Hebrews 12 verse 11 says, as for us, we have all these great witnesses who encircle us like clouds. So we must let go of every wound that has pierced us and the sin we so easily fall into. Then we will be able to run life's marathon race with passion and determination. For the path has already been marked out before us. I don't know about you, I'm not really a big hiker, but I can just imagine if you carry all this heavy 
burdens on you. You will get so tired and you will not be able to run this race that has already been set before us. So we must let go of every wound that has pierced us, everything that damaged us, all the hurt, all the pain. There is so much healing in God and he really he wants to give it to us. He says in Psalm 147 verse 3, he heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. Isaiah 61 verse 3 says, this is one of my favorite um, scriptures in the Bible, to grant to those who mourn in Zion, to give them a beautiful headdress instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the garment of praise instead of a faint spirit, that they may be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. But we have to press in and press through. It is not easy going back to your wounds and your hurts. It's not easy. But if we don't address it, it will fester and create more pain and destruction. I really have been blessed with the most amazing husband. Actor, singer, tennis coach, everything. <laughs> <laughs> and um, we got young when we were 23. That's very young. I'm like, my daughter is 17 now. So if I imagine she needs, she has to get married in like six years, it's like, oh. But um, although I was 23, in my emotions, I was, I was, I was this hurt little girl. And um, he just kept on loving me, and he just kept on affirming, and um, yeah. But the thing is, I think I laid a heavy burden on him because it was never his job to fix me. I needed to give it to God. And um, yeah, the only thing um, I always knew with my fear was in order not to be overwhelmed by it, I tried to control everything because that's what I thought would make sense to me. If I can control this, it won't go out of control. But um, as we know, there's not a whole lot we can control in this life. Um, yes, so I gave my heart um, to God when I was a little girl and I knew I was saved, but I didn't live in victory. I felt fearful, I felt anxious, I felt unworthy for the longest of time. And um, and I knew I knew there was more and I knew I had to just press in and press through. So I did a course at um, Dr. Daya Brooklyn called Journey Divine. I don't know if anybody knows it. It was a few years ago, I was 30 about the age. Yeah, about 30. And um, during one of the ministry sessions, um, I responded to a call for prayer and I actually had to get up on the stage, which was quite a big thing for me. And um, I just remember while I was kneeling down and somebody prayed for me, in that moment, something just broke loose in my spirit. I don't, I, I just knew that day that God had come and just delivered me from fear. The fear that really wanted to keep me in this little cage. Um, so in that moment, I just like spontaneously <laughs> burst out very loudly speaking in tongues and everybody was looking at me because I was sitting at my table and I could hardly speak and say a word and this was just an overwhelming <laughs> feeling and I just knew that God did something there in that day. So the, just the most amazing feeling washed over me because I knew that God delivered me from fear. Um, as the lies of the enemy got exposed and all these strongholds came tumbling down, I feel like I could really receive God's word and what he spoke over me and who I am in him. Um, it is so crucial <coughs> to renew your mind because for the, I had so much wrong thinking and so much just lies that I believe that um, it's a journey, of course, it's an everyday journey that we still have to go through. But, um, yeah, there are just so many amazing resources, even in this church. And even just speaking um, with somebody about it is just, I would suggest seeking counseling and just just press in and press through. 
um, wounds can also cause unforgiveness, bitterness, and hatred. But God can actually just, He wanted to do, me to surrender everything to Him, everything to Him, so that I can live freely and lightly, everything that held me back. So I had a journey where I had to forgive my parents, I had to forgive myself, I had to forgive everybody because I was mad and um, I was broken and I thought it was all everybody else's fault. But in my own brokenness, I also did, yeah, I had to forgive myself for all the things I also did in my brokenness. In the Passion Translation, it says in Isaiah 53 verse 5, but it was because of our rebellious deeds that he was pierced and because of our sins that he was crushed. He endured the punishment that made us completely whole and in his wounding we found our healing. In his wounding our healing was. Jesus took everything upon him so that we can live freely and lightly. We don't need to carry this burden and these wounds it is it is a divine exchange if you surrender it to him he also took my mother's addiction and uh, when she had it it was extremely hard i remember there were times where i thought god is she going to make this because the doctor did like a you're not going to drink those anymore this is it it was heavy and um but it was just so worth it and for 10 years, I had a mom that I could see who she was created to be. And um, I got so much restoration in this time because my, two, my two girls were still small at that stage. And the way that she was with them brought me so much restoration. It was just such a special time for me to witness how she was with my little girls. Because that's the mother she always wanted to be. And... Um, in her, in her essence, my mother is love. I cannot even bring the two people together, how the way she was and the way she is. My father passed away two years ago at the age of 85, and um, he suffered from dementia. He suffered, yeah, he suffered from dementia. And in this time, God just made him so open and vulnerable with me. And um, we really had long chats where I could understand where where he came from. He was the oldest of 13 children. <sighs> and then that was also a big thing because my mom couldn't, you know, she got sick and she couldn't handle three or four kids and my grandmother had 13 children and yeah, he didn't understand. But anyway, um, he just, he felt that his father didn't see him. He didn't notice him. He had to take care of the children because um, he was the oldest um, he had to go and get his father at the station every weekend when he was drunk and um, he didn't even finish school so my father carried a lot of responsibility and I, I kind of understood where he came from he unfortunately also for a long period of his life operated out of fear and just unworthiness not not knowing who he was but God was so gracious in that time we had because we could speak so openly and it's actually the first time we just let his guard down and we could really speak and um, I must truly tell you I have nothing but grace and love and mercy towards my parents today I really 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 do and I truly believe that it's only God that can bring that type of restoration it's not something that you can do on your own um, Philippians 3 verse 12 to 14 says, I admit that I haven't yet acquired the absolute fullness that I'm pursuing, but I run with passion into his abundance so that I may reach the purpose for which Christ Jesus laid hold of me to make me his own. I don't depend on my own strength to accomplish this. However, I do have one compelling focus I forget all of the past and I fasten my heart to the future instead. I run straight for the divine invitation of reaching the heavenly goal and gaining the victory prize through the anointing of Jesus. If we 
can just, if you want to sit or you want to stand or you want to kneel, whatever you want to do, we'll be better able to play the song. Better podcast, so. <laughs> <laughs> and then you just open your heart and ask God to come and show you where, where there's still an area in your life where you want to want to bind up maybe it's an old wound maybe it's a new wound but he wants to bring healing and restoration and just full release and um, yes I really trust him that he's not finished with us and he's still doing this work and he's still 